I have got Jacob Clements from Team Toxic in the UK to break down a really, really cool and looking very consistent Kasai of the Golden Sand CC deck. Um, we've been, I think, even we've been, we've accidentally, we might not have accidentally paired up each other into Talashar, but I remember <laughs> seeing this and being like, oh man, this, this, this hero is really such a pain in the bum. Like everything about it has an on hit effect in some capacity, whether it's making gold or making copper or, or just the Valiant Dynamos and all that. <laughs> this, I mean, and we played up and, um, yeah, I remember just sit thinking, bloody hell, man, <laughs> she's she's popped off. But thank you so much for joining. Uh, how are you doing anyway? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, Hamish. Uh, very kind words to say about our Talashar game, given that you did in the end take it. Oh, I, I got with a, with a with a very meme like Viscera deck for sure. So I don't know how real, yes, but, but still, it's. But it, I am I'm excited. Sweating. Yeah, and I am excited to show you the Casa deck. Okay. Uh, that we've got today. Let's get going. Let's start this off, right? We're going to start this off with the with the weapons. I think it's very, very clear this is a very weapon-centric hero. Yeah. We've, we've got the Centauri Sabre. It's a very clear, obvious... It's her weapon. You know, we all know it's her weapon. Yeah. It's always been her signature thing. Um, so you've got one. Um, yeah. I would expect it... I was, at some point, expecting a lot of people to run the two. But you're running one. But just break down why mm -hmm. Centauri Sabre is... Such a good card for Kasai. I mean, Centauri Saber's an incredible card. It was her original signature weapon. They brought it back with this new incantation. Incarnation yeah. words. <laughs> um, it's just um, like a one for two weapon is like, you know, standard rate without yeah. additional text. And so the fact that it can punish your opponent blocking with attacks, which is most people's three blocks of their attacks, by just ticking up that one extra point of value just to be over rate. Mm. is just you know huge um and on your blood and hands turns when it gets up another tick on it or but just it's that like just pushing the the value of being like i was on the level and now we're just one above it's going to be a theme for this deck yes I... <laughs> but you can just be one above rate you're just just eking out that little bit of extra value i love it and now <laughs> we're going to go over to the new weapon that's been dropped with heavy hitters hot streak and i love this card when i first saw it i was like Oh man, like this is this isn't being spoken about enough, I don't think. It's like really like you said, we've got we we we're, we're eking value with the different types of cards that you're blocking with, right? And when this is defended yeah. with by an attack action card, this gets go again, right? Why did yeah. you, why did you decide to add hot streak to the deck and not two Sinsari Sabers? Um, so adding Hot Streak to the deck uh, does have an obvious opportunity cost, where before you had this, when you had two sabers, you had this powerful effect where they could never get full value mm. from their attack actions, whereas now they can. But the trade-off that you're getting by running Hot Streak is that um, there will be hands where you're holding a Blade Runner or a run-through very often in the deck. Yeah. And you're like, if I, I've you know, planned my turn cycle to play the Blade Runner to give my Centauri Saber go again. But when you run Hot Streak and swing it first, you're also saying to your opponent, if you do block this with an attack, I don't have to play my uh, Blade Runner or run through. I'll just arsenal it and keep it another turn. And so in a way where Centauri Saber was threatening to get plus one yeah. if they blocked it with an attack, Hot Streak often in Kasai is threatening to draw you a card yeah. if they block it with an attack, which, I mean, just... See, see above about <laughs> yeah. eking out that incremental value. Drawing your cards worth a little bit more than one life. <laughs> it's so good. It is so good. So um, good. Uh, have you? Uh, have, is there times where you would actually want to run two sabers, or is this like a locked in sort of? This is what I'm going to do. So there are. So the list is only got the the two weapons, and it's always running those two. Yeah. There are some times when you would rather two Centauri Sabres. For example, on your Spoils of War turns, because yeah. you front load the go again, you can't actually uh, like threaten the... You know, the Hot Streak doesn't actually have any effect on those turns. No. And also on these turns, you're trying to push an on-hit, so it would have been nice if you could get that Centauri Sabre text. But the problem is, I was thinking about running a second Centauri Saber, but it's not, it's less there are matchups where you want to run two Sabres, and more there are turns 
within the game you want to run two sabers. Right. And so I just made and I just made the decision that although there will be your spoils of war turns where you'd rather not have a hot streak over a match, the extra value you get by threatening the blade runner on the hot streak is a lot more than the point of damage you might miss out. Yeah. On the spoils of war turn. It seems like it's yeah, I know what you mean. It's the consistency of I'm I don't yeah. always have a spoils of war. So and this just does more on its own than having that turn. Yeah. So yeah, I I, yeah. I I sort of hear I hear you, man. That's really good. So uh, we'll go. That's that's the two weapons. Really, really cool. Two weapons. Really, really cool. Yeah. Let's go through the equipment. We'll break down the obvious ones, right? And then we'll get over to the juicy uh, chess piece, right? Yeah. Valiant Dynamo. Obviously, this card is valiant. It's crazy, right? This- this was, I think, someone said to me once, this is the best card that's not seen play in Classic Constructed before this set came out. Because what it's it's armor you use every turn. Yeah. Like, when you learn the game, you're taught that your armor you have to save because you can only use it once in the game. But it's just, like, it's one free life every turn. Yeah. And it nullifies your opponent's breakpoints. It helps you deal with their on-hits. Like, it's... I don't know what to say. It's crazy. It's, the re- it's, <laughs> it's one the of the reason. reasons to play this deck. <laughs> it's the reason to play this deck. It's got. The, I mean, there's 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 one or two other headline reasons, but this is definitely, you know, in the elevator pitch of Kasai, this is one of the first things you're saying as to why to play this deck. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then we're going to go over to um, well, well, we'll go over to Rayforge Braces. I was going to go to the Crown of Providence, um, but I think Crown of Providence is now it's it's got it's been competed, it's but. We'll, we'll go to that. Bracial Braces. Yeah. I'm intrigued by why you picked this one. There is a list that run um, the... Oh, what's it? Is it? Co- it's the Courage one. The one that goes, if you hear, the makes a... Iron Song Versus? That's the one. Called? That's it. Iron Song Versus. I shouldn't know this. I played Bolton. But <laughs> there's some people that run that because it just turns, you know, uh, like a hot streak into an on-hit get plus one. And if you block, though, you'll get... So why did you pick Brave Forge Braces? Um, so there's a couple of advantages I felt like Brave Forge Races has over Iron Song Versus. Uh, first of all, it's a battle worn instead of temper. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to choose between using the last block and still having the utility of the equipment. But uh, perhaps a bigger reason, because that only comes up at the end of games, is that, uh, and without jumping the gun too much, with the new Vigor Chess, yeah. when you have a leftover resource in the turn, you will have like you will be choosing whether to use it on an extra damage from Brave Forge and an extra resource from Vigor, possibly. And so with Brave Forge, if you choose to invest it in a damage, you know you're getting the damage. Yeah. Whereas with Iron Song Versus, you run the risk that you'll say, I'm gonna spend this resource on a damage, and then they block out, and then you know, you you got nothing for your resource. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because it's if this is this is something that comes later, and whereas the on hit is front facing, isn't it? It's like here it is. Yeah. Do you want to deal with this? Yes. Okay, I didn't get a payoff. Whereas this one is, do you want to? Do you not? Yeah. Like, do I want the resource? Yeah. Do I want the damage? I you don't know. It just gives you more hidden information. Like, yeah. Like on the in a way, the first swing with Iron Song versus, you're like, I could pay one to give the first swing on hit one damage. Yeah. But with Brave Forge, your first swing always has on hit. I could pay one to get one damage. Yeah, and it's that flexibility, isn't it, on what you want it's to do? That flexibility, with that yeah, yeah, that's really cool. That's you cool. make your opponent decide how to block before you decide if you're paying the resource for the damage. Love it. That's a good. That, there you go. That's the reason why. But at the same time, if you don't own a copy of Bracial Braces and you do, they're very, yeah, they're it's... very close. Don't no no one needs to feel too bad about which one they run. And there is um, there was an interesting argument made to me the other day for Iron Song about how. If you ever go down to a single blue hand, activating Iron Song and swinging Hot Streak is actually a very powerful option that Brave Forge doesn't give you. Mm. So there's definitely some interplay, and if you only own one, I would I wouldn't worry about going out and buying the other. No, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so the headpiece now. So we have we are going to have to shimmy over to the sideboard bit, but we've yeah. got Crown of Providence in your main board, and now we've also I think it's worth talking about the other. Yeah. One as well at the same time. The balance yes. of justice. Balance. Crazy card. Crazy new card. Yes. But crazy new card. is there I know that you've got it in your main board list. Is that something that you would generally want to run 
first and foremost? Or let's talk about uh, bring, bring, bring in, it down. The thing I think I've Crown of Providence is main in the list and balance is side. But in reality, you're I think you're running them a very like even amount of the time, or you're maybe even running balance slightly more. The reason I have Crown of Providence as the main board slot is just because it's my default. If I don't like if you play a deck and you're like, oh, I'm not sure if they are going to draw two cards. Yeah. You know, you run Crown. And then if you're playing a Fi or a Bevia or a, you know, all these decks that have the Anyone Dark Wars, has... the Blood Rush Bellows. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Then you you're just... suddenly like, we switch on to ba- switch over to balance. Um, yeah, both, both headpieces are obviously very powerful. They both block two and they both can draw you a card when conditions are met. Mm-hmm. Um, and into decks... With uh, like CNC decks, Crown of Providence is very powerful for protecting your arsenal. But what Balance of Justice gives you is it's there's no cost to the card it draws you. It just lets you cleanly yeah. be up a card. Which to go back to this value game plan we've got, you know, getting something for nothing is a lot better than getting a card but putting a card back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's. I think realistically, and I think it's a fair comment to say that if you're pit if having uh a hero in general not just even kasai just a hero in general that will go i'm going to run uh, crown of providence because it's the best best test piece i've got available i think every single time now it's and balance of justice because you know it yeah. could be better than crown of providence you know just in that alone 100 percent and I mean, the only the only risk there is if it's now you're eating up two of your slots, and some decks that are very tight on slots might have to commit to one based off the meta. True, because it's definitely just a matchup thing. If you if you're looking at a meta and you think that, you know, and it's too early to know what this meta will look like. Yeah. But yeah. if you look at the meta and you're like, you know, ninjas not in the meta, uh, brutes not in the meta, maybe you get rid of your balance for the slot. And if you look at the meta and you're like, guardians not in the meta, there aren't many CNCs being played. Maybe you just run balance. Yeah, that's it. But that's I, it. I still think it's still you have hard both, pressed. If you have the slots, <laughs> it's just so powerful to always... If you just always be on the be- the better one, it's just so powerful. Absolutely. They're both incredibly powerful. Absolutely. Now let's talk about this spicy new chess yeah. piece. Grains of Blood spicy Spill. Oh, so it's, yes, this... Yeah, go for it. Break it down. I mean, it was hard to do because Courage was such a such a strong chess piece, making your weapons free. But they've. I think they have, it's fair to say, done it. Mm. Um... Grains of Blood Spill, in, in this kind of a deck where you're, you know, wanting to run yellows for Kassai's hero ability, wanting to run blues so you have the pitch, wanting to run reds because they're good, it just gives you that, like, flexibility of, you know, if you have a Vigor token, you're like, if I draw my next hand without a blue, I just have a blue now of one of my yellows. It gives you the ability to, like, bank extra resources so you're, like, avoiding inefficiencies that might happen in your plays. It enables some very disgusting stuff with cash in. Uh, that we might talk about later. Yeah. It's just so much flexibility, and there's no loss. Like you, know, you pay one resource to get one resource back out. So you're not you're not losing any efficiency, but you're gaining flexibility, and the flexibility helps you be more efficient. It's just a no brainer in my book. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Is it kind of like, and it's not as flexible, and it is a little bit different. But is it kind of? thinking of like a value guardian hero with this chess piece like the it has this seismic surge yeah feel to it definitely uh tech plating is a very uh good like, analog for it um it's obviously slightly different because tech plating you always have the option to bank one resource yeah whereas this sometimes you don't get the option to bank a resource sometimes you get the option to bank two resources so there's a little bit more variance in it but it's very analogous and tech plating is a very strong card. So anytime you're looking at a new card and it's got a very close analogy to an old good card. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a good indicator that it's going to be good. <laughs> Absolutely. When I got shown off on the podcast, I saw it live. I was just like reading it going, I like, I haven't worked it out, but I just know this feels really good. This, this feels so and, good. And of course it's another uh, two block uh, temper bit of equipment and you know it's not like courage where you never you have to choose between the effect and the last point of block like you should always if you're you know using your armor properly be able to get three life out of this chess piece which i mean you look at cards like crater fist yeah trading an equipment spot for like you know two block temper equipment with virtually no text was already a powerful option so the fact this powerful equipment piece also 
is a two block temper just yeah you know oh yeah it's it's, it's insane it is insane All right let's go let's go through the deck now i'm gonna just i'm gonna glide through quite a big chunk of these cards which we had a yeah. chat before we kicked off <laughs> um just because they're pretty much a sim they're doing that similar job role of um basically making your weapon have a go again right and that is blade runner run through and uh Spurs wars has got some sort of more to it and, and hit and run as well but let's just go through the that that these these seem like the core cards from looking at the list we'll just we can glide through this without being too long the core play pattern of the deck yeah. is having a blue and a one cost card that gives a weapon go again and gives you some power buff yeah uh so if you look at you know run through yellow blade runner spoils of war these are all cards that if you have a two card hand of a blue in them you're going to present six damage on your weapons split up hard to block you know the text is online and you're going to refresh your dynamo so these all build in this these like seven value hand into the deck and of course red blade runner you know eight value because it's just one more damage yeah uh, and that's like the bread and butter you know, every hand you draw up you're like i want to keep a blue and i go again yeah and then you go from there so they're very very bread and butter hit and runs a little more interesting because it's you often don't ideally you're not playing it for the go again you're playing it for the plus three on your second weapon but it's a fail safe of if you don't draw one of these other go agains you can always in a pinch use your blade uh use your uh hit and run as a go again although that's a slightly lower value because without a power buff it's only two two and one refresh yeah yeah, it seems like but, the, it seems like know. the blue one is that second cycle. Uh, here we, yeah. you got to keep. Here we go. It's like the last little bit of I'm the last little going. bit. Yeah, and also the flexibility of having cards that can be your blue or your go again in your hand just makes you more consistent. Yeah, and everything blocks three. So if you draw, you know, a second blue or a second go again, you know, just block with it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, uh, precision press as well, kind of similar. Yep. Yeah, just another blue go again. It's you know that fail safe of if you've drawn too many blues you know you can pitch one play one that gives a go gives your weapon go again it's by far the worst uh blue go again in the deck but um, there are arguments i've heard to run um like the new card that makes a vigor and an agility in its place yeah 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 uh but that one blocks two and just i was like i want when I was looking at the deck, I was like, I want my blues to block. I want all my blues to block three, because mm -hmm. I want all the cards to block three. You know, it makes a good, consistent deck that's able to block. And then I want as many of the blues as possible to give go again to my weapon this turn, just so there's as small a chance as possible that I'll draw my hand and say, oh no, I don't have go again, because so many of the other cards stop working if you don't have a go again. Absolutely. I think that's a fair card. Plus as well, the Pearson one, I don't think it'll come up too yeah. much, but you it's... never know. <laughs> I mean, when it went, if it gets an on-hit through that you weren't expecting, it can be yeah, can be a pretty good blowout if your opponent doesn't realise you've got piercing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so I think Spoils of War, I know it's laced into that thing of um, obviously getting that go again, but how important is when the weapon hits and you're making that two copper tokens, is that like a I really want this to land sort of attack? Or are you fine if they do just... Yeah, you know, block it out. I think it, it depends on the matchup uh, somewhat. Uh, if you're playing against uh, one of these more aggressive heroes, like Five, for example, mm -hmm. he uh, struggles a lot to block your weapons because you know a lot of his cards block two and their attacks. So when I'm looking at a hero like that, when I play my Spoilers of War turn, I would actually swing the Centauri Saber first for the four because it's got the power buff and you don't need to try to go again. And so what you're saying to Fi is either you're going to have to give me like three cards to block out the six I'm doing, because it's split up. Yeah. In which case, you know, your two-card hand just took three or more cards from them, which is incredible, swings the tempo in your favour. Or they don't block, and you get four coppers and your blood in the hands are online. So I think Spoils of War, I kind of look at as like a, the house always wins. Yes. Yeah, because <laughs> I think whenever I'm playing up against um, uh, Kasai and they always drop a Spoils of War term, it's when you like that th phrase of the house always wins is so true because I really do not want to just take this to the face because generating that much copper tokens for those turns when she has a blood on her hands, which is really a really strong combo to execute. Yeah. It's just not worth 
like it just feels like a Meridian Skies to the face sort of turn, and you're like, yeah. It's really bad. <laughs> Don't let them do this. The payoff is too big to let this happen. Yeah. So that's how Spoils of War feels to me. Yeah. And the only thing I was say, in like some of the slightly longer matchups, it can be worth as Cassai trying to set up your Spoils of War to come on the back of an attack react, be it Blade Flurry or um, if you've sided in, in the swing in that matchup. Just because there are some matchups where it's a bit easier for them to block it out. You know, they have Sink Belows, they have if they maybe if they're victor they have test of strengths and so they actually could efficiently block it and those are the matchups where you actually do need to push it a bit more so it depends on the matchup but in general i find spoils you know it's it's a perfectly efficient card in rate and it has this powerful on hit so it's very hard to play it wrong no that's true that is true <laughs> so um let's go through so, so that's pretty much a big chunk of the go again stuff i think i'll end yeah. the chunk of go again stuff oh we've got warriors valor as well do you just yeah, that's just another yeah, blue go again. Yeah. Glyn. Combos nicely in, in some matchups with Hot Streak. Yeah. Glyn, uh, obviously, there are some very powerful plays you can do with Glyn if it lines up with the reprise and then you draw a card and your next save is free. Uh, but I've actually found with, because you're often swinging Hot Streak first, a lot of opponents don't want to block your Hot Streak, so then your Glint's got reprise left often. But still, you know, a zero cost go again. It's another hit and run, perfectly functional. It's in the reaction step, a bit better. Yeah. There's just, you know, all these blue go agains. It's options. They're never going to be the most exciting, but it just makes it harder for you to break. That's true. That's true. All right, so that is a big chunk of the Go Again cards, which is actually, as you can see, a vast majority of this deck is just laced with this very core stuff, um, cards that are just enabling that. So there's some. let's go through some of the pump effects, right, with uh, Outland yep. Skirmish and Slice and Dice. Slice and Dice, it just yeah. seems <laughs> like... <laughs> let's talk about Slice and Dice, right? Slice and dice. Yeah. So slice and dice uh, at red. You know, it's a zero. It's a zero cost card. That's four damage to your turn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, very powerful rate. Um, it splits the damage up in ways that, like, sometimes is beneficial, sometimes is a little inconvenient if your opponent, like, because often your sabers when they come in for two, it's hard for your opponent to get an efficient block. Slice and dice bumps that first saber up to three. Sometimes it's a little less than ideal, but you know, the card is zero for four. Can't complain. No. Uh, the red one is just such a good rate. And then the yellow one being a zero for three, you know, it's not quite that like breakneck rate, but a zero for three is a perfectly functional red. And this, this you know, perfectly functional rate for a red card yeah. actually comes in as a yellow, enabling Cassai's hero ability. Yeah. You know, you've got to bite the bullet on running some yellows. You know, your yellows are always going to be a little below rate. Might as well make it the yellow that's the least below rate slice and dice. Absolutely. Uh, and, then, and then the blue is just a blue. another blue. <laughs> Block threes. If you do draw... And then the reason I was wanting to run these, like, the zero cost go again as my blue in slice and dice instead of something like overpower blue, which could have pushed, you know, been good for the push, is that, you know, between the cash-ins and the sideboard and cracking golds, uh, you're often drawing cards in your turn. And so the fact, knowing that, you know, if you draw this card, it's never going to clunk up a hand. No. You, know, you can always... It's, it's not, it's not amazing, but it'll always be able to play and add something to your turn if you draw it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then Outland Skirmish is zero cost. Uh, put the next one-handed weapon gets plus three. If you uh, the next time a weapon hits, create a, create a copper token. Blocks with three. So it just seems like, um, yeah, like it's the yeah. steel blade. Oh, what's it? The 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 one the, the other warrior one that just. Sharpen steel. steel. It? That's it. It's sharpen yeah. steel. Yeah, just sharpen steel with an on hit. Yeah. Boom. Uh, yeah. As again, um, copper good for your blood in their hands. Uh, sometimes you'll only have like two or four coppers from your spoils, and you're like that one extra copper would just add, you know, two damage to my turn by letting me choose an extra plus one on my blood in their hands, and suddenly this outland skirmish goes from being a zero for three to a zero for five if it hits. And, yeah. You know, zero for three is a perfectly fine rate, but. You know, zero for five, very powerful card. And yeah, it's yeah. just an on hit in a deck that doesn't always have an on hit. It's just perfectly solid. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's kind of like your pump effects from what I can see. There is one or two spicy cards here. I am sort of double backing yeah. a little bit because I think we're, go we're approaching the point of which we didn't actually discuss at the very start, which is a bit weird <laughs> of me. What does Kasai actually do? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you we have to like yeah. crop this bit out and put it at the beginning, <laughs> I, I can guarantee you I won't. 
<laughs> so if um, if so if you draw a card your turn uh, this turn, your sword attacks cost one less to activate. So kind of very similar to the old Kasai from Blitz, where it, it's that that second attack is free if you swung with the first one. But this one time around, it's if you've actually just drawn a card at all, all your attacks are free. So it's pretty much if I draw, I've got courage of blade hold got ready to go yeah. right very strong and her once per turn action which has go again banish two reds and yeah. two yellows from your graveyard the next time a weapon you control hits this turn create a gold token so in this turn she's basically saying i'm going to make my weapons have an on hit that creates gold and i'm making the cards i've just blocked with have you know m- more value to it if and creating on hits that's how strong do you think her ability is with this whole setup her ability kit is incredibly strong because yeah. the rest of this deck i mean we've been talking about it but aside from the blood in her hands this deck already existed in uh, cc with dory with like axe dory or saber dory um and it wasn't that powerful like it was fine but the fact of the matter is her hero ability suite combined the two abilities create situations where you just, like, end up as a five intelligence hero sometimes. Yeah. Which is insane. Yeah. Because her second hero ability, it is her second, it, the, yeah. make, the one that makes gold. Yeah. Um, it does, It's not guaranteed, but, you know, you have some attack react, sabers are hard to block, you know, you're going to make some gold off it, and it doesn't cost you anything. You won't use the cards in your graveyard. And so her hero ability, her second one, makes you free gold. And her first one creates these situations where... You know, you've gone into your turn, your hand's maybe a Blade Runner and a blue, and maybe that's it, maybe there's a slice and dice in there. But the fact of the matter is, you know, you've not got anything you're going to arsenal. And so you're like, I could pitch the blue and, you know, pay one for Sabre, pay one for, um, pay one for Street rather, pay one for Blade Runner, pay one for Sabre. But instead, I'll pay two, break the gold. But the two resources I paid for gold, I get back from Castle, making my weapons free. Yeah. And now there's just this, like, free extra card that, you know, if it's a slice and dice played out right away, if it's not, you can arsenal it. And so the ability to, as long as you've got a free arsenal spot, use her hero sw- ability suite to just draw free cards. It's like, it's, you know, it's the... It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. It's the first line of and text these, that's crazy. Yeah, it's the first line of text that's crazy. Well, it's, I think it's the com- the combination of the two. Like, if you had one, in, if you had either, but not the other, it's a bit more like, ooh, I'm not sure how you get value out of this. But the fact that together they create these situations where you're just a clean card up. Like, how do you compete with that? No, yeah, works. yeah. For a hero ability, this is just... It just oozes with um, create... Yeah. Like, I mean, just, o- it just tells you only, what to do. I feel like only Victor. Yeah. <laughs> only Victor compares in terms of, like, hero abilities that just, like, net you so much value, like, cleanly. Yeah, yeah. Without I- having to do any other, like... Like, we kind of saw this with Fi, because he, like, drew you a card, but the card was always bad, because it, or, like, you know, a yeah. little under rate being a zero for one, but in fact, Kasai's card draw is yeah, true, just you're up. You've had five cards this turn cycle. Yeah, it's it's really, really strong. So I just wanted to break that bit down. So now when we're talking about some of the other cards that are going to be, um, like, cash-ins and whatever, or just some of these draw stuff, it's going to make a little bit yeah. more sense. So... Let's go through to, um, I will just say that you've, uh, as an attack reaction, I don't know how many sort of buff up attack reactions you've got. Yeah, you've got two. So Blade Flurry, a zero, target weapon gets plus two, your next weapon attack this turn gets plus two. This card is bonkers. (laughs) Yes, bonkers. There's nothing else to say about it. I mean, it's it's another one card, four damage, same as Red Slice and Dice. Yeah. But unlike Red Slice and Dice, where right, Red Slice and Dice is like completely telegraphed and sometimes doesn't put the breakpoints well, this one is an attack react, pushes your on hits, it spreads it out in a far more like awkward breakpoints for your opponent, like just as it's, just as everything you wanted to do. It, yeah, absolutely. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see this in um in Dory either. Oh no, we're not gonna talk yeah. about Dory, but it's just such a strong we're card. We're not gonna talk about Dory today, but it's <laughs> no. a very strong Dory card. <laughs> yeah, it's an extremely strong card for us. <laughs> Um, it's and, maybe stronger in Dory than it is in Cat's Eye. Yeah, yeah. But it's very strong in Cat's Eye nonetheless. <laughs> and then you it's in your sideboard, but you got in the swing as well. Um, when yep. is this getting applied to the deck? 
Uh, so in the swings coming in for the matchups that are a bit more fatiguey, a bit more blocky, where your on hits aren't quite as free. So into some of these decks, if you're playing a deck that you know has a lot of two blocks and a lot of attacks in it, mm -hmm. that tends to want to hold hands, you know, the fires of the world, yeah. the, like maybe KOs of the world, you're like, I don't need in the swing, you know, I'll just get my on hits anyway because my sabers are so good at getting my on hits. But into, you know, the Victors, the Bravos, the Dorries, the Mirrors even, mm. um, with this deck, you're like, ooh, you know, this deck is more three block, more non-attack three blocks, they're more willing to block me, they have more armor, and so you're like, actually, there's a risk that my spoils turns, the turns I activate Kassai, my opponent will just block out, and I won't get any value, and so if you just bring in these cards, you know, because they're fine rate, you know, zero for three, not, not breaking the wheel, not terrible, but just say, actually, I'm just going to push these gold on hits, I'm going to push these copper on hits, yeah. yeah it's 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 just very it's very strong in that for that regard okay so i've got we've got a weird card here we've got a real weird card here take it on the chin <laughs> take it on the chin and that's on the main yeah. board break it down bro the main... so i mean this card obviously is kano application yeah. but it's in the main deck as you've noted not the sideboard yeah uh so the some of the agility cards uh, can play a little awkward because if you make an agility in your turn, you know you've not blocked with it or you've like taken damage to make an agility in your turn. You don't know what your next turn's going to look like. Uh, so I'm not running any other agility cards for that reason. But the thing with uh, taking it on the chin is it's kind of sneaky how it's not really an agility card in the way the other ones are because at the point you make you make the agility in your opponent's turn. Yeah. So you've already drawn the hand where you're going to use it in. So it plays just like, in a lot of ways, a Blade Runner or a Spoils of War in the you know play patterns. It adds go again to your hand, but it costs zero, and it doesn't. It you know does two life swing. It doesn't present the damage, but it gives you the health. So it's kind of a zero for two plus go again your next weapon. Which if you look at you know run through Blade Runner, um, Spoils of War. Yeah. You know yellow yellow Blade Runner, run through and Spoils of War are all they all cost one. Add two value and give you go again. Of course, spoils does stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But this one costs zero, which means that you're, you know, if you pitch a blue, have an extra resource to potentially gain a vigor token or to get plus one off Brave Forge or to play a one cost even maybe. Although there's not many, there's yeah. not really any of those in the deck to play. So it just, you know, it sets you up to start chaining the vigor token while still being like a very efficient card. And it plays around, plays around dominate, play, plays well against Kano. It's just. I think this card's being slept on and it's going to be like one of the strongest to go again, go agains in Kassai. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, when you break it down in the maths and everything, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it, it, when you put, say it the way you've been going on, like, broke it down. Yeah. yeah. Like, without it's... sounding like a broken record, I just look at the cards and all the cards I'm like doing this Kassai deck building, I'm just thinking, what's the like, in the play patterns, I'm going to draw them in. Are they, how much value? You know, are they getting? And this is one that enables you to defend two, swing back for four with your sabers, make a vigor, and refresh your dynamos. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> that, that play pattern's pretty strong, man. That is, that is a strong pretty play strong. pattern. Um, okay, um, we've got. We'll talk. We'll, we'll talk about blood on the hands, right? It it was when this hero was revealed. Everyone was also was straight into auto get loads of blood on the hands, right? And we just yeah. weren't really sure is this card gonna work? And obviously, as things have progressed, a yellow block three is just very synergistic of what her she wants her deck to do. Yeah. But actually playing the card and being able to perform that big combo turn you want to do, right? How? What's your thoughts on Blood in the Hands in general? Is it working? Is it not? What's So it's a very matchup dependent card. I actually find uh, I run three into the heroes I expect to be less good at blocking me than in the world. And then into the heroes I expect to be a bit better at blocking me, I cut it down to two because it's online less often. But as you say, it's a yellow three block. So it, it's few blocks three, perfectly fine. And then is fuel for Kassai's ability. And, you know, it just having it in your deck means that all your spoils, all your outline skirmishes are constantly threatening. And although you're not getting the six copper, you know, back breaking blood on our hands that you used to get in Blitz with the old Kassai, the, yeah. or the young Kassai, the previous Kassai, um, it's still, even at just four coppers or three coppers, it's still a pretty damn good card. Yeah. 
Because with like three or four coppers, you choose go again, attack twice, and then plus one as many times as you can, all on the same weapon. And so it means your blood in the hands and a blue could, with four coppers, do eight damage and refresh your dynamos. It's that's you know, with three, it's six damage and refresh your dynamos. Like it's still pretty good. And those are prime candidates. Those blood in the hands turns, where you're getting an extra swing in. You know, three swords are prime candidates to activate Cassie to push a gold on here. It's crazy. So. Yeah, it, you like, might as well. You, you might as well run it because yeah, you, you might as well. You have to lower your expectations a little bit if you've played uh, the previous Kassai. It's not going to be quite as crazy, but it's yeah. still plenty, still plenty strong. You got this one copy of this rounds on me. Um, yeah. So I imagine it's the card draw is <laughs> yeah card draws card draws good, but. Card draws. It's also giving your opponent an extra card as well for all these extra blocks. Why did you put this one copy in? So I was on three before. Into like the ninjas, into the go-wide heroes, it can be quite effective. Because yeah. obviously, although it costs you one resource, it then makes your savers free. So it kind of net ends up netting you a resource in some ways. Yeah. Uh, it just depends on the matchup, whether giving your opponent a card is worth minus one in their turn. And where sometimes you're drawing cards in the middle of your turn, you can't always block with it in the matchups where it's bad. Yeah. So I ended up only being on one, but this is a very meta-dependent slot. You know, if if Fi is very relevant, you might cut two precision presses for two more. If, you know, there's no Fi's at all in the format, maybe even cut this last copy for another blue. But it's just, it's something we're experimenting with. I think it's quite powerful in some matchups in the deck worth, yeah. worth having the flexibility on. Absolutely. So you've also got a, a defense reaction that seems to be in the, yes. in the main board. That's all you've got. In the main. You've got a Victor card yes. in a Kasai <laughs> deck. <laughs> I know, a little, little bit crazy. I know. A little bit well, crazy, having flavor-wise. Yeah, it's not actually a Victor <laughs> card. It's, anyway, it's, it's, meant, it's meant to be him. Why have you picked yeah. this card and why is it in the main board? Uh, so what I like about it is you have to run yellows mm -hmm. to enable Kasai's ability. But yellows, of course traditionally not that good no um so you know the yellows i'm running there's some cards like blade runner and slice and dice that are so overrate that even at yellow you're happy to run them there's some cards like blood in our hands and run through that are only available at yellow and so i was looking and i was like i just want to run like a couple more yellows so i can consistently activate cast i like every other turn say and so i was looking through the yellows and i was thinking and i was like what what are traditionally very powerful yellows codex of frailty they're powerful because they're only available in yellow Mm -hmm. And so I was scrolling through the, you know, yellow, yellow majestics that were legal in Kassai. And I was like, actually, that what you got in the matchups where you can turn it on into the ninjas. Yeah. Incredibly strong card. It just gains you a couple life for free. You know, can't can't argue with that. No. Um, and even into the Guardians where you don't turn it on, just having a card that blocks three as a reaction. You can park it in your arsenal and be safe. Uh, against Dominate, or even from hand against Overpower, it can play quite well against. Mm. Um, I do sometimes side it out in the matchups where I'm like, actually, it's just too clunky here. Reinar, they intimidate it, and then you're stuck with it in your hand, you don't know what to do. But, you know, you need to run some more yellows to enable Kassai. There weren't any amazing yellows. And I went, this card's, you know, got some very powerful applications. Let's take a chance on it. Yeah, no, that's a really, that's a, seems like a very, yeah, makes total sense. When you break it down like that, makes sense. So this is your main board full of cards. Let's go down to the, uh, the sideboard. The only card oh. I think we didn't touch on is just Nourishing Emptiness. Oh, we didn't? And that card's crazy. <laughs> Why did that I That card's that? crazy. Right, go. In the elevator pitch of Kassai, as I was saying, you got Blood in the Hands, you got Valiant Dynamos, and then I think the third reason to play Kassai is three Nourishing Emptiness. Right. Like, big picture reasons, you know. Because you can banish the Nourishing Emptiness out of your graveyard with Kassai, so all three will be online. Um, sometimes, you know, it's your whole turn, you know, you just block two cards, play Nourishing Emptiness that's online, and that's very powerful. You're either stripping armor, which is good, because you've got these other on hits, like spoilers you want to push, or you're getting, you know, to play a two-card six that nets you a five-card hand, which is insane. Yeah. And then, like, sometimes you get really busted turns, where you use a hit, red hit and run, you know, on the second swing, your opponent's oh. thinking, like, oh, he's just played the hit and run for plus three, you know, he's, because he didn't, he, you know, because often with hit and run, you choose between go again or plus three, but those moments, you can play hit and run, say, go again and plus three, and then after my two sabers, following up with nourishing, that can be yeah, okay. that is it's crazy. It is crazy, and like you said, we're banishing it yeah. as well. We're we're bringing it back. It's just banishing it, bringing it back. And sometimes you can, and the 
the other one just to watch out for is if you have a spoils of war or something and you want to swing your centauri saber first yeah. when you swing your heat uh hot streak second if you're holding two cards left your opponent won't know if you've got a reaction and an arsenal target or if you're waiting for them to block with an attack to follow up with nourishing so this is another case where hot streak can be very powerful in the deck yeah it's just you know incredibly powerful cards yeah, having having those uh, options to just be really open and really flexible and choosing yeah. how you're gonna like structure your turn based on just like what they're doing you know it just seems like like you said i love it the phrase you use the house always wins it's like yeah unless you're unless you're a deck that's just like dumping loads of defense reactions and just trying to really slow the game down it when you're trying to be like come back with something you have to give something up. You have to take take something from Kasai in order for you to have this turn back. And sometimes yeah. these turns can be just like so punishing. And Nourish and Entrance can be just, is one of those cards that's just like, oh no. <laughs> and I mean, every card we've talked about except for the reaction blocks three. So all these cards where you're hearing them and you're like, this might be really powerful, but I could imagine a situation where it's clunky and doesn't work. Block. You'll block three. Block three. It's good. Yeah, just block up, man. It's great. Right now, let's let's go to the sideboard. sideboard. We did talk about in the yep. swing. So, uh, yep. and we also talked about balance of justice as well. We'll go through yep. the null rune. Null rune for null rune wizards. Yeah, That's wizard it. rune blade. Sure. And I, your wizard matchup is quite weak anyway, so I think you could trim null rune to have a like even worse wizard matchup to. Then like maybe run poppers, but you'll have to see how the meta shakes out. Yeah, I think that's fair. That's that's that's, that's what that's what Kano players want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no one sue me if I play Kano and uh, and you cut the null rune because I said that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's break down. Uh, you got sink belows. Um, yep. One of the best uh, defense reactions in the game. When are you slotting right. these in? So, I mean. I'd say one of the best defense reactions in the game could easily be main deck, but I was finding that the decks got so many synergistic pieces, and Sync Blow isn't quite synergistic, it's just powerful. So it's ended up in the sideboard, but you could bring it in into like a lot of matchups. I, at the moment, am just bringing it in into like the matchups where my opponent's presenting like big on hits and dominate. Hmm. So that's like Guardian, um, or the matchups where I know my opponent's very prone to fatigue, like Dash IO. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Or Azalea. Is yeah. another matchup that's both prone to fatigue and presents big dominate on hits. That's um, good reason too. That's a good reason. So, uh, War yeah. Warriors Valor. Warriors Valor. So Warriors Valor um, is into matchups that run like you know run entirely attacks yes. that don't have any uh, non attacks that block don't have any reactions and it doesn't have to be like a hundred percent. I'm still working out what the exact ratio is, but like into the ninjas of the world, you know, with hot streak. Again, going back to my comment, the house always wins. Yeah. If you play a Warrior's Valor and swing your hot streak, your opponent's like, well, if I block with an attack, let's go again because it's hot streak. Yeah. And if I don't block with an attack and it hits, it'll have go again because of Warrior's Valor. And so it just gives you another one of these, you know, red Blade Runner rate cards. It's one cost, gives go again, and three damage that creates these eight value turn cycles on two cards. It's crazy. You know, <laughs> it's crazy good card. Damned if you do, damned crazy. if you don't. Uh, damned if you do, damned. Yeah, so uh, I'll skip over cashing. It seems obvious. Raise an army. Yeah. We'll talk about cashing, don't we? Raise an... Yeah, raise an army. Yeah, no, no, no. Raise an army. So this is a tool for those really long games that go to fatigue, that heroes who might try and fatigue you. Because uh, gold, you already have a very powerful use of just by pitching a blue to crack it to be mm -hmm. up a card. But against, you know, like the Axe Dorries, the Axe Olympias, you know, the Fatigue Victors, the Fatigue Bravos, these decks that try and, like the Mirrors as well is another matchup that, you know, you can end up fatiguing each other and going very late. Having this explosive option against these decks that can't efficiently deal with the Centauri Cell Swords, because Ninja would just, you know, yeah. head jab, head jab, head jab them. But these decks that struggle to attack multiple times per turn might try and fatigue you. And, you know, just that end, end overwhelming value where you go... You know, because it's one cost to swing three. That's so efficient as yeah. a new weapon with option. With go you've again. Got. <laughs> with go, yeah, with go again. It's... You know, it's just like, you know, the ha Hail Mary finisher. Well, not Hail Mary, but like over the top yeah, it's, it's, finisher. It just helps us get that last little bit piece out. That last little grind. And then cash in, obviously, um, the one card. Cash in. That, yeah. This card. All the way on the other end of the spectrum to um, raise an army. So the main deck's 58, and I think you're always running, you're often running either two cash or two raise as your last two. 
Cashin, if you have a Vigor token up, let me tell you, in the aggro matchups, this card can be back-breaking. <laughs> because what you do is you block your hand down to be all, like, zero-cost pump cards, like Slice and Dices, um, Blade Flurries, uh, like, you know, these, like, zero-cost cards that add power to your turn. One, one-cost card that gives go again, so like a Blade Run or a Spoils. And then when you play you, Vigor Breaks, you play the cash in, you pay the gold, you draw two. You're like, my sabers are free. My Vigor can pay for the go again. I'm not going to pitch a card this turn. You know, if I draw like a card that doesn't work, like another go again or uh, um, Nourishing Emptiness, Arsenal, it, use it efficiently another turn. But what you'll probably draw, because so much of the deck costs zero and adds power to your attack, it's designed this way, you should probably draw like another Slice and Dice and a Blade Flurry or something. And so you can just be like, bang, no pitch. I played a cash in this turn. You know, yeah. insanely efficient. Yeah, and it's a ye- and it's a yellow in your graveyard. You know, you could probably activate Cast Eye that turn and get your gold back. Oh, it's yeah, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's a reason why this card is uh, being bought out quite a lot on card yeah. market and TCG. It's just, it's just yeah, it's just a no brainer. Only reason it's in the sideboard is it's a two block, and if you don't have a gold, it doesn't really do anything. So you can't run it in the matchup, so you won't have a gold consistently. But in the matchups, you do have a gold. Bank that vigor every turn. Wait to draw your cash in, and bam, you're in the money. Well, bro, I mean, that's the deck. This is it. This that's is the deck. it's it's pretty very consistent, very streamlined. Yep. Uh, every every card in here, you can just sense and get the that answer. Why? I love the fact that uh, take it on the chin as well as I was like, why? And as you explained <laughs> it, I'm like, oh, why not? This is so good. It's so good <laughs> with just the value that you're explaining. Um, Thank you so much for taking your time to break down your Kasai deck. Is there any sort of shout outs you want to do at the, just to sort of wrap this up? Uh, no, well, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be on. Um, I mean, shout out to my team Toxic, uh, George Rogers, Dan Collett, that lot. Um, you know, always, always happy to have a brew with the new decks. You'll see us around any, you know, middle of England uh, ProQuests and RTNs. Uh, yeah, no, thanks for having me on. I know Arash, so we'll let let you get on but yeah no thank you thank you so much guys uh the deck link will be below check it out play it when uh when the set comes out um not it's not this weekend the following weekend and uh just have fun taking it to your local armories and your upcoming road to nationals and i'll see hopefully most of you in the uk in liverpool and hopefully yourself jacob liverpool yes i'll be there looking forward to it sick thanks very much guys